proudest day and the proudest time and the, the seat of a rally here because that day and that hour and those minutes I got the butt between my teeth you know I really stood up and was counted and said this is not getting away I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me what are we doing I said we're going for gold Barrett that's all we said I can still picture that run that was just the best best run ever To crunching gears let's talk rallying episode 15 believe it or not <laughs> I, I always say we have a jam-packed episode but i think we've, we won't overboard this time you know uh joe sharp once again kindly caught up with the top three overall from carlo yesterday that's josh moffat darren gas and declan boy he also caught up with the top three mark two challenge that's ed o'callaghan frank shelley ryan lovren uh then we also caught up with uh, Kevin Eaves, then we, uh, we'll do a Portugal preview later in the show as well, where we caught up with Jim, uh, George McElhane and James Fulton. And then to finish off the show, uh, we have Desi Henry. So, <laughs> Connor, I should say Connor Edwards has joined us here as well too. Connor, we have a jam-packed show tonight. Absolutely, Kevin. Like it, it, It's just getting ridiculous at this stage. <laughs> I don't think we have to know, you know, match the number of guests to the number of the episodes or something. I don't know what we're playing out here, you know. <laughs> but listen, it's a great, great problem to have. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's fantastic that, that the guys are joining us and, and you know, want, want to contribute. And mm-hmm. it's it's fantastic to hear their stories. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's great that we have so much to celebrate. You know, the rallying at the moment is just, you know, in this island and beyond, you know, it's going from strength to strength. And it's great to have a platform. That we were able to sing its praises, I suppose, you know. So it is no, and, and again, you know, to get to, to to hear directly from the horse's mouth, you know, to to you know our co-drivers and our drivers that are competing out there, it's lovely to to hear what they have to say, and and you know, delightful that they, they want to come and tell us. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So without much further ado, like you know, we have to discuss Carlo at the weekend. This muff of the express train, it, let's keep rattling on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, it's, it's it, it, like, seriously, Josh is, talk about being in the zone. Yeah. Absolutely in the zone at the moment. And he, you know, doesn't seem to matter what event he's on. Mm-hmm. He's comfortable. He's content. He's happy. He doesn't seem to be on the door handles. You know, everything seems to be very well controlled. The our Hyundai is just, you know, couldn't be running better. And like, what, a full minute and 10 seconds ahead of Darren Gas at the... Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like, and, you know, it was a compact, you know, it was the two stages run three times, nice compact route, but, you know, he really did put the hammer down at the start on, you know, the opening loop. Yeah, I think that's where the damage was done, wasn't it? You know, and like everybody else was having spins and, you know, uh, whatever, you know, trying to keep up with him. But he just seemed to be able to, you know, as you say, set that pace in that first loop, control it then, and just, you know, look more, you know, he was, he was cutting, pulling back his pace to, you know, rather than having to go flat out, it's just it's phenomenal at the minute. Good to watch. Yeah, I know it is. It's it is. It's, it's fabulous to watch it. And you know, he's done that pretty much on on every rally he's competing on this year. Mm-hmm. It's control the pace. He's gone as hard as he's needed to go, without you know putting it you know beyond or really <clears throat> been on the limit at any point. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But without any further ado, well, Joe Sharp was the man at the, at the moment yesterday, and he caught up with Josh. Uh, Darren Gas and Declan Boyle at the finish line. Congratulations, Josh! Another good result today. Yeah, no, we're happy, happy out there. I suppose we just got off to a good start this morning, and and, and we took it from there. And you know, we'd, I suppose after the first two stages, we had a nice lead there. So yeah, we just continued on and did our own thing there all day. And I suppose the boys were getting a bit quick, quicker and closer to us, and uh, Darren had the quickest time there in the last stage, so he he got that extra point there, which was. But sir, it was uh, we still got the win, and I suppose that was the main thing for us. So yeah, so we're in the midway point here, the national championships. That's four one to the four. So yeah, no championships definitely going good for us, and um, I suppose we're that halfway mark. So yeah, hopefully we can keep it going now, and another two wins, and we should have the the championship wrapped up with that. So um, yeah, it's been good. Yep, happy enough. Second. Um, we made a bit of a ball in the first round now in the second last days with a big spin and put up about 20 seconds so um, good run in the last stage and 
Hope you finished. Yeah, you're the fastest stage time in the last stage, I think, hadn't you? I had, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, uh, there wasn't a big pile left in the knife, so. So that's good now for the championship, you're second overall in the championship at the moment? Yeah, I'd say that's where we're getting used to second now, Josh is head and shoulders above everybody else, so we'll uh, keep training. So the next round now you'll be sort of the monster, is that the plan? That's it, and I might be doing the wee rally in Cookstown the Saturday before Munster, I think. Um, so that'll be two rallies in two days. It'll be a busy weekend for you. It'll be busy now, aye. See, Declan Boyle, we're here now at the end of the Carlow Stages Rally. Another great day for you. Yes, sir, good day, Joe. Um, uh, this is our first day out in, in, in the Polo. Well, I, we've done a few stages in uh, the Circuit of Ireland, but uh, good, good, a good run today in it, and uh, good car. Suspension is great, and um, looking forward to getting out in it again. So the next day now will be the Circuit of Monster, probably, or yes, the Circuit of Monster is the next one out, and uh, the big one then, Donny all after that. Good on you. So. Championship now, so you have your getting a better points in the championship. Championship, too. a few points uh, on the board there today, but um, I don't know. Uh, Josh is hard to beat there, and uh, there's no hope we're going to beat him. Uh, we're too late starting anyway. Um, but listen, we need plenty of seat time after COVID and everything else. Seat time we need to build the speed. Good on you. Thank you, Declan. Thank you. Kevin, always great to hear, you know, Declan Boyle, and you know, he seems to be coming to terms with that polo now. And curious, Donegal's coming up. You know, is he going to go? WRCPS says is he going to go polo be lovely to see him in the polo absolutely I think you know I think polo has to be the way to go like to be honest the, you know the polo I would say is every bit as fast as the WRC you know um, like the corner speeds and everything else you know but uh, either way uh, it's going to be fascinating um, the two wheel drive battle then as well yesterday Kevin Eves class act you know I think he's over a minute ahead of the, the guys in the Mark II's um, third overall after the second stage, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, unbelievable. You know, no Lees, R5, rally two cars, uh, again, a ton cam <laughs> amongst them all, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and com- no disrespect to Kevin. I actually thought when I was looking at the times coming in, ah, there's a mistake there, you know, like... <laughs> Twin cam sitting third overall. I don't think so. <laughs> Boy, was I and, and I was pleasantly surprised. And you know what do you call it? It was just incredible. Like he really was pushing that car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, you know, and still seems to have a wee bit in reserve, as not it? You know, but yeah. I caught up with Kevin there, um, and let, you know, we'll get his thoughts. And also, <laughs> once again, we have to say to Joe Sharp, you know, he caught up with Ed Callahan, Frank Kelly, and Ryan Lockham. So we'll we'll let, we'll. Go to Kevin and we'll roll into them three from there. So I suppose we need to start off, you know, Killarney. Um, you're keeping that Rob Duggan man very honest for the all day Saturday, but you know, we, we all know Rob is the secret of the gap. <laughs> it must give you great confidence, you know, how well you want on the Saturday down there. I know, hey, hey, it's definitely good. Hey, the reality is Rob, even coming out of West Cork on that. Uh, He's the boy setting the pace at the minute. Uh, I suppose in our car, I suppose James now James won in West Cork. And that, but I suppose we were benchers to Rob. Um, so you know, it was very good. He had about 50 odd minutes of racing in on Saturday and come out of it 10 behind Rob. Um, it was I know we were, we were definitely very happy now. Mm-hmm. The Sunday turned into a different story, but <laughs> <laughs> we knew that was coming. Yeah, I think whatever it is about that man, the gap, you know, if we could, if we could all get that secret, <laughs> I, I when you just. Put it, I guess, you put his knowledge and then the talent he has to, to basically climb up there. Hey, like it's, mm-hmm. hey, it is mad. Like, like he, he took more off me. He took 50% more off me on the first stage than he did the whole day Saturday, if you know what I mean. Like, yes. he, mm-hmm. he, 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 oh, he maybe 13 seconds on me on the first stage, like, but he's just, nah, it is, hey, mm-hmm. it's, it is a cool stage. But that, hey, it's good to see. It's good to see. Hey, it's good to chase. So Aye, it was it's giving you yeah. something to push towards too, isn't it? Aye. Aye. And then, Here. you know, at the weekend, then you had Carlo again, like another fantastic result. Third overall after two stages amongst all these R5, Rally 2, and even the World Car 3 on there as well, you know. So, I know, I, it was good. I think, I think the Carlo allowed there was a, it, it was, it was good in the sense of, I'd say, the very first stage, and even the very first stage is very different now. The first run through it was very, very gravelly, you know, and if you can, I suppose, was. Gary and the list of boys that was all there, I suppose we knew we knew we had to kind of get hot out of the blocks. So 
I suppose we pushed on through the gravelly bits and took our chances and even even Gary was only a, a second behind us after the first stage and I'd say that's where we done a lot of the harm. The second stage was a bit more fast and flowing, you know, you, there wasn't really a pile of ground to be made. So, but hey, it was, I was shocked myself when I got to the end when when uh, Patrick says we were we were third or something. I was like, oh, Christ. <laughs> I, uh, I loved Andy's quote at the end of the, I think it was the end of the, the fourth stage. What happened to you in that loop? You dropped back two places, you know? I, oh, I was looking at him, I thought something was wrong, and I was laughing. I kind of, I kind of took me a second to understand what he meant, and I was thinking, we were talking about Rob Barable and gas or somebody. I was like, you on, give, me, give me some credit here. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, you know, you had the, the cream of modified guys there, like, all bar two or three. So, like, that has to give you huge confidence doing so well down there. You know, you finished uh, like over a minute ahead, ahead of Kelvin at the finish up. Ah, yeah, it's good. Hey, no, I think I think some of them guys now, I suppose, like even uh, even Ed and Milkman and uh, like the, the guys that's all there, even that Lockern and Baller on the first stage now, right enough. But um, okay, I think I, I, I think it is, I think the thing has driven on, you know, even I suppose me, I suppose probably me, Rob, and Gary and then I suppose Daniel is doing the international stuff I suppose we've kind of been battling now a couple of rallies and that big pace has kind of been there where I'd say um, seek teams really paying dividend there hey, and the pace is big so the kind of the boys that's, we've done a couple of rallies like it hey, we were just in hot from the word go sure I think maybe on the first stage the other boys got a scratch time on an edge time but I think me and Gary sure we could have been 20 quicker or 23 quicker than the next place you know so i'd say the seat time's really paying dividend you know and that pace being there and the one we just have to go kind of thing so and then you know the, the development in this year in the car too has been paying huge rewards for you you know you you moved over to ryan locker and working on the car for you like that seems to you know it's made the car a lot better but it seems to give you more confidence as well I know nah, the car, like Ryan, Ryan's class, even like there's times we're not even trying to do things to the car, and I'm just even blathering on. I was chatting about going on a harder spring, and I suppose he's the knowledge. He was sitting saying, Oh, I shouldn't need to go on a harder spring, and even silly things like he, he for, I was having a lot of brake fade for a long time there, but it was my own fault. I would probably left a left a brake and I'd ride the brake a wee bit, and I was kind of always blaming myself, but then I thought there was a bit of weight transfer. He was always giving out to me that. I had my brakes too far to the front, but I always felt like if I went any further back, I was, I was trailing the back axle, you know? So I suppose even just chitter chatter, and the next thing he was in, and he changed the geometry of the tension struts or something to put a bit of, pre- I, you know, I said it went over my head what he was at, too, but I don't care though, and I had a brake paddle the whole weekend, and the car seemed more stiff, and we weren't changing springs. So just how he's done that, how since last year, how like the, the back axle, the geometry, or the four link bars, but all changed in it, and he's just, He's been in and out every different rally, doing different bits here and there, and just even get me more comfortable in the car, and the seat position, so that I'm not sure maybe warping the brakes and stuff. I'm just ah, Ryan, you know, he is he's very very you now. He's he's a driver behind it all, so he knows. You That's know, that I is the engineering brain, and he is a driver brain too. Both a, a lethal combination. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can't if you can't explain what you mean, just. Put him in the seat. And right, right now, he's got my seat that far back now. I nearly need a booster seat made for him, for he's a, he's a bit too short, I think. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bit of a difference in the height of the two. Uh, before he could get in, he could, he could manage it before, but <laughs> I'm, I'm too far back now. <laughs> and, you know, we all know this is all gearing up towards June. Like, so confidence must be high going into Donegal. I hey, no, like, hey, it's... It's like anything, Donegal. Donegal, uh, I suppose, uh, Donegal, and, and the 2x5 year, I've never, I've actually had a cruel enough time in Donegal. I've always seemed to have wee bits of baller and I went off and done bits and bobs, but I, I haven't been as confident in the car. Like, I'm happy the pace is there. I think you're going to have the likes of, like, I still feel like in my head, like Rob, I'd say Rob, the reality is, hey, everybody we've been this year, Rob set the bench. Like, and mm-hmm. I think if anybody thinks Rob's not going to come to Donegal and probably set the bench, you know, in the escorts and our cars, mm-hmm. I think we just need to go hard. He, he, like, he's very, very quick out of the blocks. You're looking at him in the R5 car, so is he not the fastest? Uh, fourth, uh, fourth overall. First, first, first R5, yep. 
Uh, you know what I mean? So, and then you probably, I'm presuming Stafford's going to come up the road. Mm-hmm. Like uh, in that area, like even even the pace we're on now, like even in Carlo and that, like he even in Clarney, like uh, right, we were in on top of him or close to him, but like he was still leading or upsetting the pace. So, mm-hmm. uh, in the likes of him, and then get to Saturday, you probably have like the likes of Egg and that, you know, the Nahala in that area. Mm-hmm. He's just going to be quick and hi, it's it's going to be good. Hey, there's going to be. Mm-hmm. the top 10 modified cars it's just going to be a lot three who comes out and talk to you you're all going to be going there with you know thinking that you, this is your year kind of thing aren't you? You know, so. mm-hmm. the big all's a long rally but it's a sprint at the same time there's if there's only a couple of quick buys maybe you can play a bit of a calculated game but like if there's 10 buys going hell for leather mm-hmm. not every man's going to end up in the hedge so <laughs> yes, you, just um, to, you just have to go hell for leather too so and you know to change tack a wee bit, you know you're talking about you know the, the setup of the car and you're change, you're having to adapt your style into. It. Do, do you see this translating into like an R five at some point? Would that be something you'd like to try? Or? Oh, I, I'd love to get into. I would love to get into an R five. I'm happy where we are at the minute, and but I'd like to think in the next maybe two years or something. I might. I would love to get myself in a position to to climb over in an R five car. Um, so no, I, I definitely, definitely would. Hey, I think I suppose it's like anything. I, I see with them cars. I think if you're really going to try and go to the top and kind of compete with them, ways the reality is you're going to have to go buy something new or out of the box and kind of have that modern thing. Like yes, you could buy a you could buy an older R five car, but it's it. mm-hmm. nah. so it's just gather, gathering that budget up. Like sure. You know, you're gonna like a car is gonna be two on the ground and then go try and race it for a year. So, I hopefully in the next couple of years we get something gathered up and try and get slipped into it. But hey, I think the racing that we're at at the minute, I think every bit is competitive. And uh, I'd nearly be, it'd be interesting to get a run on them. But I think the kind of grunt and the the, the grunt and the power we have and, and the pace that's in our thing. Uh, I even think how good an R5 car is. Uh, it could be a it could be a struggle to get the same buzz out of it. Oh, and you, you might lose some of that, you know, that banter between you boys is legendary, you know, the way you wind each other up between the stages, uh, you know, the, it's hard to imagine that being replicated at the top then as well. I know, it's was good at a crack, like, and it rings rough and, not rough and ready, the car's all top end stuff, but like, even funny, like, my starter gave up on Burr and sure, I didn't even cop it, I thought there was boys pushing me and then putting my helmet and stuff on. Car wouldn't start, and I let up the clutch, and then Ryan was given out to me. He he ended up the car behind me, and sure, he put his car up to the back of my car, sort of pushing me down the road. Which I never copped then. I was letting up the clutch, he probably nearly broke the bumpers off her. But so that's just the. And I think Gary McPhillips' car was on its side at one stage. And I was <laughs> lying under it, there was something hanging off it. So uh-huh. it's good air crack. Hey? Just the modified thing now. The boys is all everybody's out slabbering and revving. But uh, they all know, you know, that for every second on the stage, they would take your head off. But, you know, between the stages, uh, the cracks might be. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Mm-hmm. Hello, Callan. We're here now at the end of the Carlo Stages Rally. And you're the winner of the Mark II Challenge, which is a great result. Yeah, we enjoyed it today. The stages were tough now today. Stage one there was, there was a lot of loose gravel and it. it. was like a forestry stage in places there now. But it was very challenging now. But the pace out there today was absolutely crazy now. But a lot of damage done there in places too. But, you know, it was thoroughly enjoyable. It was tough, but if it comes easy, it's no good. It has to be tough. <laughs> and you had plenty of competition today as well. That's one for thing for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, we're, we came here before and we, I think we finished, uh, we were fourth in the Mark II Challenge. But... Uh, Today you now we had a good old result, but everything worked perfect today. Kane was very good in the notes and the car was very good, handled very well, speed was good, so when it works, it works well. And the weather conditions were ideal the as well? The weather conditions are absolutely brilliant. In fairness to Carlo Motor Club, no, they run a great event, like everything was, we had no problems all day, you know, everything went quite smooth and we had an enjoyable day. So the next event now supposed to be your local event, will yeah, it? Yeah, the next event, no, yeah, Circuit of Munster, so I think my daughter's sitting in, it's her first time ever sitting in, but we'll see how we get on. <laughs> See Very good. Goes. Frank and Laurie Kelly here, the end of Carlos Stages Rally 22, and second overall in the Mark II Challenge. Yeah, surprise to us to be fair. It was a savage day's rally and good stages, good weather, massive crowds. Um, this car is starting to come back to its old self and we're starting to get into a real nice rhythm, so it was good to get in of it. Uh, we needed to inherit a few places with time we'd lost the first stage, but apart from that, happy. Real happy. 
right through the next store in the area championship. Uh, we're doing Monster Rally uh, down in Limerick. And hopefully that goes well then. If we're lucky enough to let people nothing all we'll head there. After that we'll make go broad, maybe a new few rallies. Relax a bit. Brian Lawton here in the Carro Stages Rally 22. Third overall in the Mark II Rally Challenge. Oh, it was good. Uh, it was a good finish till uh, till the day. We didn't start off that great, you know, with losing the minute this morning, I suppose, with uh, the flat tyre, the wheel, whatever you want to say. So, no, it was a good recovery. Happy with it. It was a good rally, isn't it? And plenty of competition, for sure. Oh, the competition's fierce. Like, if you look at look at the top 10 modified cars that finished there, so they're all second for second today, really. The pace out there now is just unbelievable. Like, there's no room for error whatsoever. So your next event now is Maiden City, is it next weekend? Or? Ah, yeah, we're hoping to go to Maiden City next weekend, and I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe look, look and try and see if we can do something else before we go to Donegal also, because we've got a bit of work to do. Donegal's a big one. That's the plan, anyway, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So great to hear from the, the modified men there. Ryan Lofton coming back and finishing third yesterday as well, after his issues in the morning. Like once he gets a couple more rallies in below his belt, he's going to be one of the contenders come Donegal time, I have no doubt about it. Um, this weekend coming, we have Portugal, the WRC returns. And, you know, where do we start? <laughs> we have OJ, we have Loeb back, and then we have all the, the main protagonists as well. That's going to be a fascinating weekend, isn't it? Oh, listen, it's definitely one to watch. And, you know, there is a bit of extra hype. I know some people give out that OJ and, and, and Loeb are taking up seats that, you know, somebody else could be in, but it does add a bit of extra drama. And look where OJ is on the road. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to be in prime position. What's he, about eighth or something? Some, uh, yeah, that's yeah right. like mm-hmm. the road will be well swept and well cleaned by the time he's coming down. So it'll be very interesting to see how times compare on day one. Absolutely, absolutely, you know. You know, and like, when are we ever going to get this opportunity to, again to see, like, you know, 17, you know, 17 time world champions, you know, <laughs> two, two guys probably going to be rated amongst the greatest of all time, the two of them, you know, to see them on the stages together, I, you know, I, I think it's a 1 1 for everybody, for the championship, for them, for the teams, for everybody. I think it's class myself personally. Absolutely, I think it is. I agree with you. And it's not like that they're making up the numbers. Those guys are out to beat each other and to win. Mm-hmm. You know, so what do you call it? They're fully committed. There's no, you know, yeah. just you know, driving back waving at the crowds or nothing. You know? <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. And again, also just want to say about M Sport, like M Sport are fielding five pumas. I think that's a tremendous effort. Yeah, five from a private year team. Like yeah. you know, we, you know, we, we, they haven't the resources of the Toyotas or the Hyundai's. As you say, like, it's, it's, it's massive for them. It's brilliant to see. Yeah, so hopefully, fingers crossed, now it pays dividends for them because they certainly had a lot of bad luck on uh, Corsica. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, like this Kelly Rogan Perriman, eh, you know, he's going to be running first in the road in Portugal. Probably not ideal. But, like, he, you know, he's a bit like Josh Moffat. He's a bit of a steamroller at the moment. <laughs> he is. No, listen, he, he's in a different zone as well this year. Definitely. Uh, you know, when you look at Croatia, like, you know, Croatia a year ago, he didn't even make the first, you know, complete the first stage. And then mm-hmm. this year, just a complete masterclass in atrocious conditions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just seemed to, I, you know, it just seemed to control the rally. I know, yeah, I got ahead of him with a couple of stages to go, but he never felt that he was going to lose the rally, did you? You know, you always felt he had it in hand. So, um, and Hyundai, the way they have turned around their season, you know, after Monte Carlo, we were almost writing their season off, thinking, you know, oh, they've been, you know, they've, they've been sold a pop here. This car is not going to be any good. But they've really turned around. And, you know, and still no team manager, you know, name now. So I, I know, yeah, still it's a long time now. We're, you know, mm. we're well into the start of the season. And, and you know, somebody, you know, for somebody new still to come in and bed into the team. Mm. And then don't forget Danny Sordo's back for this. So, again, mm. Danny always goes well in Portugal. He's won it the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, again, he seems that this part-time drive seems to suit him. Yeah. He seems to come back strong from from you know, uh, whereas other drivers need to be in the car and have the consistent seat time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem to phase him. Absolutely, you know, and going to be favourable road position as well. And then you know, we can't forget our own Craig Breen. You know, uh, sitting third in the championship. You know, we can't you know we can't underestimate this. You know, <laughs> this is one of our own guys, third overall in the world championship. It's, brilliant to see himself and Paul doing so well Ah oh, listen it's fantastic it genuinely is and you know it's unfortunate for him that Loeb and, and, and uh, 
OJ are there because they're going mm-hmm. to take points off him, yeah. you know, and it's going to hurt his championship. That's that's the mm-hmm. only downside to having mm-hmm. the two world champions there. But I mean, you know, again, Craig, a good, sensible, consistent runs. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not doing anything silly. He's not doing anything stupid. He's not putting it on the line. You know, nice, sensible approach every rally so far. Mm-hmm. I, and like, uh, you know, Adam is normally what is there. Uh, I spoke with uh, Craig last week. And, you know, even Craig himself said, you know, he's had a so-so start to the season. Like, if a so-so start gets you third in the championship, he's not doing so bad. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and again, you know, third in the championship, this is his first year in the Puma. Mm-hmm. You know, the new team and all the rest of it, like, he's really done well. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, you know, Aaron Johnson and the field as well with uh, Takamoto. You know, again, like, they've been, been consistent. You know, they've had strong performances this year. Um, you know, all something good there as well too. It's nice to see that uh, that partnership nice going well. Absolutely nice to see. And again, you know, that relationship still bedding in. It was a bit rocky towards you know at the end of last year that you know the events didn't go their way, and there's a bit of a you know mm-hmm. bit of pressure on on the relationship. But it all seems to be you know settling quite well this year. So long may that continue. And, and yeah, Aaron's playing a blinder. Genuinely, he is absolutely, absolutely. And then you know the JWRC is back again this weekend. So. You know, we have uh, Walt Crichton and John Armstrong back again as well, too. So, John goes fast everywhere. And Walt has really has raised the game again this year, too. Like, it has to be considered at least for a podium, if not a one. Absolutely. Yeah, genuinely. I, Will, Will has been amazing this year. Like, he's really, you know... The lessons that he learned from from doing the championship last year, you can see he's taken them on board and he's upped his game and he really is pushing there. And John Armstrong, wow, the the accident at the weekend, oh, like yeah. <clears throat> that was scary stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, where he went into an Armco and only four of the Armco would have been over the side of a mountain in Rally Canaries. Um, <clears throat> hopefully that doesn't knock his confidence or Brian's. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, you know. And then you know, and the uh, Rally Two uh, Hyundai is. Excuse me, Joyce McElhane no. and James Fulton as well too. You know these two guys that you know they've done a few rickies now and they've done Sweden there as well. I, I, this opportunity that you know this you know the Team Ireland thing has got for these guys can you know again brilliant to see. You know we have to tip our hat to you know Sean McHugh, John Coyne, all the guys involved in that. It's brilliant to see you know these guys that. I don't know why it's the right thing, you know, are better than the, the Tarmac Championship. It's nice to see them getting the progress, getting the, the opportunity to, to, you know, go on the world stage and show how good they are. Absolutely. And the fact that it's a consistent, planned programme with them, it's not, you know, oh, here, look, we can get you a bit of extra budget. You can do this, you know, as a one-off ERC or a one-off WRC or whatever. <laughs> it's a consistent programme, which is what you need. There's no way you can develop at this level unless you're getting regular and it's just been like, purchased in and out kind yeah. Of thing. yeah absolutely absolutely yeah so, so no fair, fair play to to mi the mm-hmm. you know motorsport ireland that really is it's a fantastic program they're running for these guys absolutely you know i suppose you know we better hear from the man himself like josh McLean, and then we'll follow that up then we'll go on to james fulton so thanks for having me on adam um yeah portugal's a, a classic wrc event um with huge huge crowds and yeah fantastic atmosphere so Really looking forward to it. Um, obviously, we've got experience from the event last year, so uh, yeah, it's trying to capitalise on that there and uh, yeah, have a have a good rally, clean rally, and uh, I get a solid finish. Yeah, um, I think last year Portugal was your first top five in WRC three. Um, what what's the event like, or what sort of things can you um, carry across for this year? It was probably one of the most in, intense events we'd done last year. Um, but yeah, it was, it was probably one of the most enjoyable as well. So uh, there's a lot of things you can carry across. Um, obviously, experience is, is quite uh, important in WRC events. Stages don't really change year in, year out. Okay, they have their variations, but they have their classics as well. So uh, people are probably sick of listening to people saying about experience and young drivers getting experience, but it's, it's what it's all about, really. Um, it's like people going to Nogala, maybe a stage in Portugal's Amarante, which is done every year. So, yeah, to have this experience going into this year from last year is, is huge. And, yeah, we have to, let's say, use it wisely, not push flat out, but 
to manage the situation and knowing when and where to push and when to come back is is what it's probably about. And yeah, it's it's one of the endurance WRC events. So uh, yeah, clean solid rally is is what you're going to benefit from. Yeah, I am. Um, like that's that's one of the one of the most historic gravel events in in WRC and um. Yeah, you always think the atmosphere and the fans in Portugal as well. Um, but in terms of the stages, I know you mentioned Amarante, and it's I think it's maybe nearly forty kilometers long this year. What what characteristics of of gravel is it like over there, or what are the stages like? Um, let's say the stages in the south are probably more bedrock, more rough. You can expect higher risk for punctures, et cetera. But as the rally moves north into Saturday, it becomes more soft and, and sandy and you can get this in Amarante stage. But yeah, it's 40 kilometres. There's a lot of different roads in, in 40 kilometres. So the characteristics and it's, yeah, the rhythm's always changing. So from bedrock to, to sand to sandy ruts, it's it's always changing. And yeah, if the weather changes throughout this year, it becomes very difficult. But it's looking to be a dry rally, so uh, yeah, we can take that element out of it and, uh, and focus on focus on the roads. Yeah, and you um, did the warm up event in, in the same region um, as well this year. You were you were leading that um, up until you hit a rock, I think. Um, but in terms of pace and everything, um, were you pleased with how that went? And I guess um, you're showing good progression from when you were there last year. Um, you, you could say the pace is very good, um, especially in the first day, I think, we're leading up to the second stage. and Ultimately, we're running first in the road the next day, which probably wasn't completely ideal for, for Portugal preparations because we're going to be running 25th in the road. But, uh, yeah, it's it was good to have the pace, knowing we had the pace and running first in the road and we're still setting quick stage times, which was, yeah, basically unheard of in Portugal. So, uh what happened in, on the fifth stage was simply a, an error on my behalf where the stage kind of changed rhythm a little and the surface was so loose because we were first in the road and I misjudged the grip and slid slightly wild in the right-hand corner and clipped her up and, yeah, put us off the road. So that's the way that ended. It wasn't, uh, it was very hard to take, let's say, leading their first rally. Like, it was comfortable because getting through that stage, we had the hard work done of cleaning the, ro- cleaning the road. So, uh, yeah, we could have probably pushed and made a gap from there, but yeah, that's the way it ended. And uh, we have to take some positives, but yeah, we have to learn from that as well. Yeah, I know. Learn, learn on the warm up event. That's that's what you're you're there for. Um, and with the the rally to Hyundai, you've um, a few more events under your belt than that. How are you finding the car? Yeah, the car is very very strong in gravel. Um, even on the the warm up rally it was it was very easy to drive in terms of changing direction and, and getting the momentum. So uh, yeah, there's some things we have to work on as well. Um, but I'm very feel very well with the car. It's not like we're getting surprises and and the confidence isn't there. So yeah, it, it's a car that you can adapt to very quickly and and get onto. Yeah, good man. And we've had a sneak peek of the rally Sardinia entry list and a fair. Spotted your name on that. Are you looking forward to doing two gravel world rallies on the bounce? Yeah, it's it's probably if you had a asked me this time last year about that there, you'd have you'd have questioned it. But uh going into having this in front of you and knowing you have it after Portugal, you have to be very sensible in Portugal to make sure you, you get to Sardinia with a yeah, a good mindset and a good uh, everything in good condition, let's say. So uh yeah, I think Portugal is ultimately the priority at the moment. But yeah, we've done prep for Sardinia. I done prep for Sardinia even before I started Portugal prep. So it was, uh, yeah, it's you have to plan long term here and uh, get everything in line. Yeah, and obviously your full focus is in Portugal now. But um, what sort of things are you expecting from Sardinia? Um, yeah, it's it's only a week apart. We've as I say, we've done prep before we even started Portugal, but yeah, the turnaround isn't so much. So uh, yeah, you have to focus on both of them. Let's say you have to treat them as, as basically the same trip. So 
yeah, it's going to be rough and tough. Sardinia is always like this here and looking at onboards and looking at stages and stage comments. I think if you're not working on the car at some point during this rally, it's going to be a miracle. So you have to expect this here and basically manage the situation as best as possible. Um, yeah, well, we've only done uh, Sweden. Yeah, and uh, that was our first round of of, of the seven. So um, yeah, uh, two weeks out now from our, our second round, which is Portugal. So yeah. the prep is in uh, full swing for that. So uh, yeah, looking forward to Portugal. It's, it's a cool event. So um, yeah, it's been it's been a busy few months. We've we've done the recce's and stuff myself and Josh, and obviously the program with Josh is my main priority. It's it takes the prior priority over anything else. So. Whatever other bits of events I can do in between of that, it's just a just a bonus, yeah. And Sweden was that a bucket list event? Um, was that one that you've always wanted to do? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, sure, it's uh, the main snow event. It's sure, it's one everyone would love to do. It's a uh, you know you, you can prepare as much you, as you can for, it, but it's just it's it's surreal when you're there. It's it's you know it's something totally different, but. Uh, yeah, we 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 did, we did an off on the on the Friday, yeah. So um, it's just one of those things that happened. But we were back out again, rally too, and got the experience of it, which was the main thing. So yeah, really enjoyed it. And you had a good bit of pre-event testing, and certainly during the testing, and you did one of the the, the local rallies as well, just as a bit of preparation. But you seem to have every weather condition thrown at you during that. Yeah, we were we were up there for a few weeks beforehand. Yeah, we. Be fair to the team; they, they gave us the the best uh, prep we could. I suppose going into it with lots of testing and a uh, uh, small national rally, so it was a uh, yeah, it was all a great experience. Um, really enjoyed it all. And as you say, Portugal's the next round up for you in the in the WRC too. Um, what preparations involved in that? What are you currently doing? Uh, I was actually just finishing the recce schedule there today, and uh, oh, there's there's any amount of work to be done. All the maps and just the emails coming in there the whole time with the recce maps and recce recce rule books and just just going through everything just that when you're on the event that yeah, everything's running smoothly and you know what you're at and there yeah it just everything has its time slot and just all them little things and it's quite busy because we were only home for four days after it and then we're straight to Sardinia so it's uh, been doing some Sardinia prep as well just because uh, 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 not much time in between to get prepped for it so Josh also done I mean, Portugal last year so just getting all the notes sorted and tying in what ones are the same and all that kind of stuff from last year so yeah certainly busy and then in between that you're also doing the Middle East Championship as well um, not actually doing the Championship no just an odd event um, yeah I actually was meant to do Qatar uh, which, uh, with Abdullah's the guy from Qatar, but a uh, clash with Sweden, so I wasn't able to do that one. But then done the next round in Q8, which ended as I'm sure most people know how it ended. But um, yeah, it was unfortunate. But um, yeah, I might do some more right there if it if I if it falls in if it fits in the calendar. Yeah, yeah. Are oh, you've done a <laughs> rounds previously out in the Middle East as well? And and it's I know myself and Kevin were talking to. Um, we call Alan Harriman and Terry Harriman about this before. Irish co-drivers seem to go down very well in the Middle East. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's, it's they're quite popular out there. It's just I'm not sure what what it is. Maybe it's just English speaking and just Irish lads just kind of got in. But um, yeah, there's, they they seem to be quite happy with the Irish lads. So yeah, long may it last. And uh, you're also. Comp- Competing recently on the Olympus Rally, I know you did it last year with Callum Devine, but you were uh, competing this year with David Higgins. How did that come about? Yeah, it was a good opportunity there. Um, I, w- I would have met David a, a, a few times before when I was sitting with Barry Barry McKenna in, <clears throat> in America, and just kind of knew. Well, would have known the chapter, but uh, he actually messaged me before the for the event. He was interested, so. Um, yeah, it just I happened to fit in the schedule, and I had done Olympus before with Callum, so that made it that bit easier. So, yeah, we went out. Um, did, uh, did, Dave was a re- really nice guy; like he's uh, just a very nice fellow all around. And uh, just all the little things I learned from him over the week. You know, he's so experienced, and yeah, he's very, very, very good driver. So we only got three stages, but yeah. Um, 
it's looking like there might be some more uh, coming from there. So yeah, he we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully now we'll get another one or two in. And how was the uh, Citroen? How did you find it? That your first time sitting in the in the uh, the Citroen, or you been in one before? No, that was my first time in a Citroen. Mm. Yeah, I think I've been nearly in all the other or flies at this stage. But uh, it was the it wasn't the C three. It was the DS three, the older model. Um, yeah, it was it, it was good. Uh, it was uh, found the power and the, the gearbox. Like Dave was saying, there he was very impressed with them. Just maybe a few bits in the handling side. Uh, he was probably made of use. He's doing a lot of testing recently in the Fiesta and stuff. So, um, yeah, we didn't we didn't really get we didn't get much of a test in. With the car was delayed out of customs in Seattle Airport, so that kind of left things a bit rushed, unfortunately. So, um, but no, uh, the three stages we got were good, and we were starting to make some progress with the car. But uh, at the end of stage one, the steering rack there was an issue with the seals, so. Leaking oil and stuff, a leaking oil out of it. So we kept topping it up, but it would go again through the throughout the stage. So it was leaking out and, and causing some smoke and stuff starting to burn. So um, and we had no spare rack, uh, so we just didn't go back out after service because it was too dangerous. So that was unfortunate. But you no, know, we stayed for the weekend and we helped out the team, um, Kyle Taylor's team. He's uh, that uh, Eram Motorsport. So Martin Brady is his co-driver. So yeah, we. Helped them uh, throughout the weekend, and yeah, it was it was it was a good it was a good week all around, all the same. And was that a one off with um, David Higgins or or um, the possibility of a couple of future events? Yeah, he uh, we've been been in contact since, so we're looking maybe now uh, another one now shortly. So just have to for a few things to fall into place, but yeah, uh, it'd be nice to get a proper run with him. Great to hear for James and wishing the both of them all the best now in Portugal. And uh, Portugal is not the only event on this weekend. We also have the Maiden City Rally taking place, which is the next round of the Northern Ireland Championship. Yeah, that's going to be a fascinating there too. You know, two stages done three times, just up in the sort of Donamada cloudy area. They're just on the outskirts of the Maiden City. It's, it's, you know, it's a fantastic top 10 there, Connor. So it's very interesting top 10. So what do you call it? With Desi Henry out in the uh, Rally 2 Fiesta. Uh, Cahan McCourt's out in the Fabia R5. Johnny Greer's got the C3, and uh, he's flying in that thing at the moment. And then with Derek McGarty in Apollo, Donna Kelly in Apollo, Aaron McLaughlin has uh, got the Fiesta WRC out. Uh, Joseph McGonagall's out in the Rally 2 Fiesta. Uh, Jason Mitchell, Rally 2 Fiesta. And then Niall Henry is out in the Fiesta R5. And Sean Devine is in the Fiesta R5. So, like, really is that that's a fantastic entry for, for Northern Ireland Championship. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I know, and then there's a few Mark Coos there mixed in the mix there too. Ryan Loughran, Damien Turish, uh, Adrian Harrington. You know, and all them guys is all gearing up towards June as well too, you know. Like, so, um, that's going to be... And, like, I know from talking to Desi Henry that we will be hearing from in a wee minute, you know, the surface is no lot... He thinks he's only looked at the DVD and memories from the previous run of it. Very similar nature to Donegal all stages too. So that's going to be, you know, it's probably going to be a, a, a realistic uh, test for Donegal as well, which is good to see. Yeah, what do you call it? A decent warm up. And it's funnier, you know, the amount of events now are getting used to, to, to help prepare and, and, and get the guys ready for um, Donegal. Mm -hmm. But like, um, you know, it's going to be a fascinating battle at the, the front of the field. Hard to look past Desi Henry, I think. You know, like the, sh the pace he showed there in the circuit Ireland was fantastic. Oh, no, incredible pace. Genuinely, I, I think his main challenger, though, is probably going to be Johnny Greer. Johnny is, just seems to be mm -hmm. on form. He's got really bedded into that C3. But, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Like, it's going to be hard to, to, to see Denny not, Desi not being on the top step. Absolutely, absolutely. So, without further ado, we'll hear from Desi and see what his thoughts is on it. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on. I've... Uh, I've started I have to admit now it's only been uh, it's only been recently I've I've tuned into the podcast. I never actually listened to any podcast before. So uh, I think you'll be uh, you'll be pleased you'll be pleased to hear it's probably the only one I've actually listened to so far. Um, <laughs> good it's, uh, you know, no, it's uh, no I find they're they're fairly good now and, and uh, I've enjoyed now the previous ones you've done. Excellent to be on here. Appreciate that. So uh Desi, looking back at the circuit Ireland, I know it was probably very hard to take at the time your your late retirement. But you have to take a lot of positives from the weekend. Yeah, we've uh, we've just about got over it now. Um, it was uh, look. I suppose we went to the rally. 
I know maybe uh, outside of our camp, you know, people didn't know, but, you know, we came from Burr. Um, and believe it or not, we knew we had pace in Burr. Uh, yes, we weren't racing Josh, but we were having this uh, pop-off and boost issue. Uh, mm-hmm. And that could have, you know, that was happening, you know, the car uh, throughout the stage, you know, could have been popping off 10, 15, 20 times a stage. So considering how close we were in Burr with carrying the issue that we could have done nothing about on the on the event, we knew that if we got that result, we weren't going to be too far away. Um, so we went there, and I suppose we went there, I suppose, as a, a dark horse. And, uh, you know, we found ourselves right on the pace. So, look, it was a, it was a good event for us. It was uh, it was great to be leading the Circuit of Ireland. Uh, if anything, that's, the, that's one of the positive, positives we can take out of it. Um, mm-hmm. But, no, it was, you know, I think we found uh, a fairly good setup with the car, and we found... Uh, we found times were sort of coming easy enough. Let's say you were still pushing, but we weren't mm-hmm. really taking any massive risks, um, which is always a good thing if you can if you can put in times without taking taking the risks. You know you're doing something right. And uh, no, look, it was just unfortunate the way it panned out was something so little. We actually thought it was the the engine uh, had uh, had just had enough, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we got back to service, we quickly realised that when the fellas got the thing plugged in, it was uh, a sensor had failed in the car, which was causing it to do all sorts of things wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, hey, as they say, and it's I'm not the first or last one to say it. That's right. And that's just, <laughs> you, you just you, sometimes you just have to you just have to move on and, and look yeah. look forward to the next day. Absolutely, absolutely. And like you know, you have to take great confidence from that because like, you know we've seen this year the pace that Josh. You know, Alistair and Callum's up for the, the limited seat time you've had to be at that pace and then you car to you as well. You know, that's there's a, there's a lot of positives there, I think. Yeah, there definitely is. I suppose the, the Fiesta, even when we drove the Mark One Fiesta before, you know, we, we always actually went well on it. Um, I know then we veered away onto Skodas and Hyundai's for different reasons, but uh. But, you know, with, we thought now was a good time to get back into the Mark II. We did see some potential in the car and, you know, uh, we've got back and it did feel natural, um, you know, pretty early on. We're probably lucky from the respect that I suppose um, Ryan, who obviously runs the car, he, uh, he had a bit of experience with the cars through uh, Cahan McCourt and uh, Jason Mitchell, who obviously runs the car, so mm-hmm. I suppose we we're fit to find our feet fairly quickly as far as setup. Uh, we we're fit to you know start where he finished at and, and move on and try and adapt the car to our, you know for ourselves. Um, but uh, no, I, I suppose one thing uh, we are probably down on this year is seat time. We're not obviously coming into the Irish, Irish Tire Mike Championship, so I suppose uh, you know from from. My part, we're you know trying to prepare for the events that we're doing as best we can, maybe putting in more effort than we've done before, um, simply because obviously you're down in the miles, you try to maybe make it up in other places and just being as prepared as we can be. But uh, and I'm trying to probably fill in um, where we can do smaller events, you know, uh, the like of this one this weekend and maybe Cookstown in a few weeks' time. Uh, one's a wee bit easier to get away for a few days, <laughs> so, <laughs> as uh, but as you know, it's uh. It's a massive commitment, <clears throat> not only commitment as far as time and getting away from work and getting, you know, whatever, you've been well prepared for the events, you know, my sort of take on is I'd rather not do an event as going there and not been prepared for it. Mm. And to be honest, to go and race, you know, your, you know, your Fishers and your Joyce's, you have to be prepared. You have to have all uh, the A's dotted and the T's crossed or else yeah. you're just going to be wasting your own time and money. Um yeah. And I suppose that's one of the things we're on the circuit. We were well prepared. We knew, uh, you know, we were well uh, tuned under the DVD um, that we got to it, and you know, we had a good reggae, and uh, and it proves that you know that it takes the work to get there. Yeah. Um, so no, it's uh, it was a very positive event for us, given what we have, you know, all the mileage we've done. But yeah. we'll uh, we'll try to get these few events in now before. Donegal, yeah. the, mm-hmm. the, the holy grail of Irish Rally. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like you were saying there, you know, about the, 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 all that goes into the car. Like that man sitting beside you, Paddy Robinson, like he has this air of calmness about him, um, confidence about him. Does that allow you then to just concentrate on the driving in the car? Yeah, well, as we all know, you know, Rally a, 
it's well, I was going to say a two man sport, it's, it's a two man on the team behind you to mm-hmm. make, the th- make sure the thing goes well. But, uh, you know, it, uh, it takes that calmness, especially, you know, when, when you're trying to drive at speed. Um, you usually find when things are panicked and they're rushed and there's, you know, a bit too much going on in the car, you're usually not going that well. But when the times are coming, you're usually sitting back and you're, you know, you're turning the steering wheel and everything falls into place. But you know, we all know Paddy, anybody knows Paddy, he's a, he's a calm, he's a calm, mm-hmm. he's hard to, he's hard to rattle now, so, mm-hmm. so uh, you know what it does, it brings a calmness to the car, and, and for me, um, and any other driver, all all's they want to know is, is what the next corner is, and, and as long as we can get that, we can try to drive as hard <laughs> as we can, but, yeah. you know, uh, you know, Paddy, you know, I think uh, Paddy sat on me, um, he sat on me a few years ago in Donegal, I think that was maybe the first rally or maybe it was the rally before was it Mayo or some of them rallies mm-hmm. he sat uh, as a run as a shakedown for Donegal mm-hmm. and I found that you know what it, it worked pretty well but obviously Paddy was uh he's it was very well committed with uh Derek McGarrett and whatnot for the past few years so mm-hmm. um so I suppose the opportunity to come up you know to for Paddy to sit this year and uh after saying it's all working well and it seems like a good uh, atmosphere inside the car. Absolutely. And like, I know I spoke to Alistair a few weeks ago after the circuit, and he says whenever you're sitting in that car and you're not even thinking about it, everything's just flowing naturally, there's no feeling like it. It must be phenomenal that everything just becomes natural, that you're not thinking about the next corner, you're not thinking about, you know, the tyres, you know, it's just a, a natural flow. That must be a great thing. Yeah, and... Uh... You know, usually when that feeling comes and it feels easy, that's when the times will come. Um, you know, if you're if you're trying too hard, usually that's when you start out breaking yourself. You're carrying too much speed into corners. You're, you're you know, it's uh, you're going backwards most of the time. So, if you can ever get into that, uh, into the groove where you're just sitting back and you're you're turning the steering wheel and everything's everything's working. But you know, these cars now, uh, the way R5 machinery has come on. Um, you know, all you have to look at is you know how they're comparing against the the older world cars now. Um, mm-hmm. Most of the boys have went away from the world cars simply because the cars are making up that much time in the corners that the, the world rally cars that is much more powerful has become uncompetitive. So it shows <laughs> shows the speed that these things are capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I suppose that's where the the knack and R five stuff is 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 having that faith and that commitment on the car mm-hmm. to be able to push them on. Yeah. And uh, and you know and do what they're capable of doing, and uh, we, we can all see from you know from the times that they're putting on this year, um, that they are you know they have come on massively. And yeah. uh, but when that when you get it right, when you get set up right, and when you're you know when the the notes are coming easy, it, it's uh, they are it's, it's a it's a great feeling, and uh, it's it's you know it's, it's hard to beat now. Yeah, and like you were one of the first, you know, whenever the the announced the tournament championship was going down the R five route, you know, you were one of the first to pop your hands and you support that championship. I think, and you've done that throughout the last few years. It must be great to see, you know, the turnaround in the Irish rally, and you know, been com- coming from like a two car rally, you know, who was going to be one between two cars. Now all of a sudden, you know, we could be getting into the likes of Killarney, the circuit, and you know, you have. Five, six, even up to maybe the top ten guys is all going there, realistically thinking they can be in the battle anyway for the one. Yeah, um, that's one thing I did. You know, I did uh, try to push at that time. Um, I seen the, the potential. I suppose uh, a lot of uh, rallies over in Europe all adopted their five uh, categories. They're you know sort of their prime category, mm-hmm. and you seen the numbers. You know, just gathering and gathering every every event they were doing, and I suppose you know. Ireland has so much potential. It's got so much talent on it. Uh, if you can create a championship with the same car, or cars that's all capable of winning the rally, albeit different manufacturers, they're all within you know tenths of a second of kilometer. You know, it, it creates it, it creates this buzz and this uh, so what about it that you know it's great not only for the drivers and navigators and the teams, but for spectators. And uh, you know, and really, really, I needed that. You know, I know. Through the heyday, there was um, maybe, you know, back in 2006, seven there was maybe, you know, six or eight world cars. But, you know, the movie only was two of them cars was capable of one on the rallies. There's such a big difference in performance as, yeah. as the thing moved on. And, you know, to me, Irish Rally I'm now is in a place, it's probably the best place ever it's been. Um, it's, it's more competitive than it's ever been 
and that drives everything on. You know, it drives it drives the sport on, and I say it, it, it makes it more interesting to watch. I don't know about you, but you know, every that it's on. If you're not doing, you're glued, you're glued to it. Yeah, absolutely. You don't you don't you don't know what's going to happen, and mm-hmm. I think that's important. And I suppose moving forward, um, you know, as far as uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's important that that the championship should be kept like that. I know, you know, people could, there's always this fear that maybe moving forward, some of the newer tight world cars could come in or crawl into the championships. And and that would, I suppose, in my opinion, that would ruin it for everybody. Uh, because, you know, all you take, all it takes is one or two of these cars to come in to, uh, to stop. So I think it's one of them things that if it was, if it was maybe cap now, uh, moving forward is a very bright future for Irish Rally. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, like as you say, I think in a few years' time, we're definitely going to look back in the last couple of years as a real golden era of Irish Rally, and there's absolutely no doubt in my mind about that, you know. So, yeah. yeah, well, I, I, th- I think you're, to me, you're you're better seeing eight or ten cars been drove absolutely on the limit as, as one or two cars been drove mm-hmm. at 90%, you know, yeah. and that's... Uh, it just uh, to me, it just creates interest, and you know that's that's better, as I say, for spectators, for and even for sponsors. You know, yeah, uh, you can go out there, no doors, and say, look, you know, look at this, you know, what yeah. we have to for, you know, That's that's right, that's right. So, uh, no, I think we're in a very, very good place at the moment, Absolutely. and uh, I think it's that's try, trying to keep that up could be the. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I think a lot of people's doing good work. You know, there's mm-hmm. I say. To me, um, a lot of years ago, you didn't have the end of stage coverage. Um, yeah. Obviously, the like a Kellen all providing, and that's, mm-hmm. you know, you, you can't replace that now. You couldn't, you couldn't live without it. No, uh, and, and it's you, so raw, isn't it? As well, you, Just, you're, you, we're, we're all guilty of it. Sometimes you're caught in the heat of the moment coming out, and you could be, you know, mm-hmm. giving off, or you could be, ha- you know, but. Yeah. But that's what it's all about, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just that raw emotion coming off a stage and and uh, adrenaline still, <laughs> still going, pump, pumping one hundred and ten percent. So it's uh-huh. uh, but look, that's part of it. And to me, that's you know, I know I enjoy it watching it when mm-hmm. I'm when I'm not competing, and I'm sure it's the same for everybody else. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we, we think Killarney there, and you know, uh, Alistair and Callum coming off stages and, and like matching each other to the tenth of a second. I think it's just it's magic, and to get that instant reaction, you know, you don't get that in any other sport like football or anything like that. You know, it's like running up to I don't know Ronaldo and asking him after he scored a yeah. goal. How did yeah. how did that feel? Well, you know, so. yeah. Well, you think I think them, you know. Them boys, and this, you know, this year I suppose been the same across the board at that level. You know, coming off, you know, tenths or even even a second. You know, Formula One cars yeah. aren't going around tracks as close sometimes. You know, and, and that's a track they can round the same corner, you know, fifty times. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. It's uh, how you can come off an eighteen kilometer stage and be within tenths or, or even the same time. I think in maybe one yes. particular case, uh-huh. it was. Uh, that's unbelievable. So it is. Now we're looking forward to this weekend, the, the Maiden City. Uh, stages on this weekend. Uh, you're seated number one on the road. Um, have you lo- had a look at the stages yet? Or? To be honest, I had a quick look at the the DVD. Um, we're we're actually ragging on Friday, um, so uh, haven't haven't been over the stages yet. But uh, but no, we're we're certainly looking forward that we say that we we won the event the last time it run. I think one of the stages uh, I've been told is the same. Um, which uh, which was a very good stage. I remember before you know the rally. The last time we done it was was quite an enjoyable rally. But uh, I'm I'm looking forward to getting out again. We actually when when somebody mentioned the rally, one that the last time we done that probably the biggest moment I've ever had and got away <laughs> with in the rallying career. We uh, there's a section in the rally where it's uh, you turn off a mountain and there's a bit of a straight and there's two jumps and we hit the the first jump and the car crashed out and went out of shape hit the second jump got completely out of shape at that stage and we uh went down the ditch and i was i felt the car was going sideways down the road i don't even know what it was fairly high speed and uh we slid the back of the car went onto the bank and uh, i was waiting and waiting on the bang and we just got the slid round, got a slight of snow we broke the boot spoiler off a tree uh, on the car and cracked the back bumper. It was uh, <laughs> it was probably it was probably the biggest moment I've ever had in yeah. life. Uh, but uh, that's one thing I remember about that rally. So we'll, we'll be, uh, so uh, we'll be we'll be watching out, we'll be watching out for them jumps this time. But uh, but no, the last time we had a but as it's Callum, I think um, uh, mm-hmm. we we uh, were battling with. So uh, we had a good a good race that day with him. So uh, he, uh, we're not looking forward to another race this weekend. 
Excellent, excellent. And you know, you were saying then after this weekend all going well, then possibly you know, Cookstown and then Donegal, like confidence high then obviously going into these events. Yeah, um obviously look, we haven't sat in the car from the circuit of Ireland. Uh, so again or we're down in mileage, so our fellas have done um They've done obviously Killarney from the last time we were out, mm-hmm. uh, which is another highlight mileage event. So we'll see, we're trying to make up mileage doing maybe smaller events. Um, so, uh, no, we'll do this weekend, see how it is. And if, if we still need another few miles, we'll, we'll do Cookstown. Um, but uh, no, I think, you know, this rally from the weekend, I think from memory, it is quite a similar surface and uh, probably quite similar nature, quite bumpy and, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think sort of medium grip surface. Uh, so I think it should be a good a good check down for Donegal. And uh, well, hopefully we can battle for the one this weekend again. That's lovely to hear there from Desi, you know. Um, you know, he has some fascinating thoughts. And, you know, it's, uh, you have to but agree with him the way you can see how the championships develop, how, you know, where it needs to go. But it's that time of the episode once again. We would have to do our... <laughs> <laughs> Dread it Probably make idiots of ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Adam, <laughs> Adam wisely chose me. <laughs> Not fair. We didn't ask Adam to do his predictions this time. We can't really say he didn't do it. <laughs> so, um, Portugal. Um, I'll go first in this one. Right. I'm going to go OJ because of his road position. Lobe, still the wily old folks, you know. And Roven Pera, I think that's where I see it go. Your thoughts on that, Colin? Do you know what? It, it's. The whole Loeb and Oshie things has made it even more impossible than it normally is. Um, I don't know. Roven Parr is on a roll. I'm going to, yeah, okay. I think Roven Parr to, to win, followed by Loeb, followed by Oshie. Cool, cool, cool. And then uh, the Maiden City. What's your thoughts um, on that? Yeah, let me see. I, I Again, hard to look past. I think Desi, Johnny Greer, Derek McGarty. Okay, right. Uh, Desi again. Um, Johnny or Kath McCourt? <laughs> it's hard to know. Uh, McCourt maybe a second, and then Greer, and then you know Jason Mitchell, home rally more or less for him. You know he's only a few miles up the roads there. You know Jason's going to go well there too. You know so. That's true in the, yeah, in the rally so, two fiesta. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he could spring a surprise. Be well, but, well worth watching. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and if he's as spectacular as he was in the circuit, he's definitely worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the end of this episode. So once again, if you could please like, share, comment, um, <laughs> I don't know, subscribe, whatever else it is you do. But thanks again for listening. Take care, speak soon, and bye. <laughs>